Well, back here in Dallas, supposed to have 10 bouts tonight, but at 197, Phil Davis of Penn State didn't make weights. So it was bout with Jerry Rinaldi of Cornell won't happen, but we do have the heavyweights here. Spencer Nadolski, redshirt senior from North Carolina, fourth in the nation, taking on number two, Bode Ogule of Harvard. We'll just go with Bode here. He's kind of like Tervel. We'll go with a one-name logo here. Bode is looking packed. He's an athletic heavyweight. He moves good. He snaps the head a lot. He's got a nice duck under. He's up against a little taller opponent than Spencer Nadolski. But uh, I'll tell you what, he's coming ready to go. Bode is taking the tempo so far. He is snapping and moving. Very athletic, light heavyweight. Now the senior from Harvard, sixth at the NCAA tournament last year. First team All-Ivy. 17th All-American in Harvard history, 10th in the last eight years, and talked to him before the match about, you know, Penn and Cornell have kind of been the top dogs of the Ivies, and can Harvard make that push? And he says, yeah, we've got the dedication from the wrestlers. Ties, I certainly think ties. that maybe we can make some noise. That's the right attitude, definitely. It's a, you know, certainly a challenge at Harvard to, to get it's such a strict admission standard. The admission standards for wrestlers at Penn and Cornell is perhaps not quite as stringent. Uh, Harvard's awfully selective. You have to get a lot of really brilliant guys with great wrestling skills to go to Harvard to, to get the whole team. But as an individual, as Jesse Jansen proved, any, you know, it's an individual sport, you can succeed and excel. But to have a whole team, it would be really super, super challenging. You're talking about what we were talking about earlier with a dual meet statistic, but certainly Jesse Jansen has proved that that program can create NCAA champions. And, North Carolina program in the ACC that would like to be able to take those steps. Spencer Nadolski, 42 and seven last year, ACC runner-up, got an NCAA wild card, went three and two, one win short of All-America status. Yep, he's looking to have a breakout year this season. Uh, UNCC, they, they've got a full allotment of scholarships down there. They, they should have a better program. They kind of sit in the middle of the pack. I, I don't know, the ACC hasn't really broken out. They got to keep recruiting, get up recruiting north, and the Southern wrestling keeps improving tremendously. Uh, they could pick up some local boys down there. North Carolina wrestling is truly on the move. The state in general, although UNC doesn't necessarily go after the in-state recruits that much, unfortunately. So well, time will tell. And we've seen parity in other sports. Do you see that coming more and more in wrestling? Definitely. In wrestling, there's more and more kids getting better. Youth wrestling is exploding across our country, and there's more good quality kids. So they're, they're spreading out across different schools. And yes, there's a lot of parity. Uh, the southern schools are getting better. The, the states of North Carolina, Georgia, Florida are all improving. So a lot of those kids are staying down in the southeast schools. So yes, the answer is simply there is more and more parity every single year. So both from a team standpoint and from an individual standpoint, there's individuals from more and more schools you know, breaking out and making names for themselves. Like I mentioned, Jansen, like earlier we talked about Stanford. You, you can go to any school and become an individual champion as long as you want to make that commitment. These two guys battling hard here from Harvard and from North Carolina. Yep. Of course, Cole Conrad, as we mentioned before, just a minor injury. Minnesota going to err on the side of caution and, and hold him out of this one. Of course, Conrad in his battles the last couple of years with Oklahoma State Steve Mako and reaching legendary status. Mako has moved on, but Conrad, the, the clear-cut favorite in the heavyweight division. This yeah, year. he's the, the king is the favorite to be the king at the end. King Cole Conrad is definitely the biggest, strongest heavyweight out there. And, uh, he's the favorite to win. Hey, as we look forward to the rest of the season, we're going to have the great bout. Lehigh is visiting Penn State. It's going to be on CSTV in a couple weeks. And then, Jason, we're going to get to go out to two of the wrestling meccas of our country, Iowa and Minnesota, to cover an Iowa dual meet and a Minnesota dual meet later in the season. Some of the highlights. So we're going to be in some of these three traditional gyms. Penn State, Minnesota, Iowa, great traditions in our sport. Uh, the Big Ten championships, each year we've been covering that. Those are, talk about parity. You just never know who's going to come out of that Big Ten championship, individuals or teams. So there's going to be some great wrestling on CSTV all season. That's just a teaser. There's going to be more than that. But those are some of the highlights of the upcoming season. Ogule try to dive in there. Does have the one nothing lead off his escape in this period. Final minute of this second period at 285 pounds. The heavyweights, Harvard and North Carolina, represented. 
Yeah, the, the big boys just don't do as much as the lightweights. There was some really good excitement early on. I, I love seeing Matt Valenti bust out early with a big lift and an ankle pick. He secured two takedowns against Coleman Scott to seal the deal in that victory. Dustin Schlater hit that sweet duck under. You see some nice explosions in the last match. Jake Herbert in that big scramble, single leg, ended up with back points. Those are some of the scrambles that stood out in my head as, as this dual meet wore on. Those are some kids really breaking out their best stuff when it counts. Uh, I was excited to see those guys perform up on center stage here in the All-Star meet and, and do so well. The big guys are pushing and shoving. We might we might see a takedown here. I, I don't know. We talked about the program at, at Harvard and trying to make those steps. Jay Weiss has certainly got uh, things pointed in the right direction. He's got help assistant coach. We mentioned Jesse Jansen back helping out. Jamil Kelly as well working in that room. It's uh, nice to have the, those kind of guys uh, hanging around your room. Yeah, he definitely has the right idea. He's surrounded himself with good coaches who have been NCAA champion and in Jamel Kelly's case, Olympic medalist. Now, can they recruit? Can they get the, can they cross, look across this country and find the premier athletes that have the grades to get into Harvard? That's the unique challenge. It takes a lot of work and you gotta be willing to make a big commitment to the recruiting to get that done. Uh, Bode, majoring in biochemistry, wants to be a doctor or something in the medical field, maybe sports medicine. Right now he's in a match that's now tied up at one apiece. The escape for Ndolski and the big guys looking like we may be headed towards overtime. Riding time does not look to be a factor. It seems these guys will settle it on their feet. And yeah, we'll see here a minute to go, see if anybody's willing to take a risk and really go after it. Uh, but you mentioned Bode being a bright guy. L like I said earlier, these a lot of these wrestlers are really serious students. I mentioned Schlater earlier, this very serious student. You know, a lot of these guys, right up and down the lineup, these are bright guys. It's neat to see so many successful wrestlers continuing their career at Ivy League schools. Uh, Valenti's gonna go on to a career in business next year. He's gonna wrap up his competitive career most likely and, and move on. Th these guys, they're using wrestling to train for their future. It's not like in the pro sports where there's a pro career waiting for you. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. These guys are doing this because they love the competition and it truly does prepare them to succeed and excel in our society once they're done with their wrestling careers. 30 seconds left to go in the third period. Haven't had an overtime bout yet. We may very well be headed there right now at heavyweight. You can always count on the big boys for a good chance of going to overtime. It's just not as deep. You know, I think about the kids I work with through my camps and stuff. There's mostly light and middleweights that dedicate themselves and make a commitment to learning the game and excelling. You don't see as many big guys. When you do, a big guy can really excel. That was nice, and he doesn't. No, oh, one foot in. Edge. Nothing. Nothing. Nope. Out of bounds. Did you see how he almost kept one foot in. That was really, really nice power double. Should have done it sooner. What's he been holding back for? Look how he changes levels and explodes. One fake. He's going to do it again. Driving, 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 and he keeps his feet in, but Nadolski scrambled on the edge. Did a good job. And the rule changed from a few years ago. Just need to have one point of reference still inside. You saw him, the feet slipped out of bounds as they worked to the edge of the mat. Yep, let's see if he's got the, the courage to change levels again and try to tackle Nadolski. Well, here we are in overtime. First minute is sudden victory. First wrestler to score a point, and it's over. Yeah. The takedown he's using is the most basic takedown in wrestling, just a straight double. You'll teach that in elementary school and junior high. I mean, you do it throughout your career, but it's pretty straightforward. So the big guys don't get too complicated. As I said, football tackle, let's take down, match is over. And he gets it done. Bode with a biggie at the end. Goule of Harvard with a takedown in overtime to post the win for the Crimson. The basic double leg wins when it counts. So Bode victorious here at 285. The OT win over Nadolski. Hey, you wondered where that double was earlier. He's just waiting around to do it in dramatic fashion. Indeed he did. Exciting too, the crowd liked it. A very nice capper here for the end of these bouts of this all 